Well, look at us Tuesday morning looking this awesome, right? You <laughs> look fantastic. I can tell you got some sleep. <laughs> totally, totally. How are you? Mornings with Luann and Tim. Good to see you this morning. <laughs> It's like morning. romper room when you do yeah. that. Yeah, and I, I see, see Jason and Millie. They never saw Luann. No, that wench. <laughs> I didn't like her. I'm very well this morning. It's confusing to me when I wake up and I see the sky looking like it's looking, and I think, wait a second, it looks like it's going to rain, and they predicted sunshine, and then I look at the weather forecast, and no, for sure, it's, it's going to be coming. sunny. It just yeah. has to clear up. I yes, guess. Yes, yes, and. Uh, Really warm too. Like I know. Twenty six, twenty seven. Again, today. but then the rest July's of the July's been lovely. Of, yeah, we kind of get this is August, honey. We kind of like, August has been <laughs> lovely. <laughs> we kind of get back to like more seasonal temperatures apparently for daytime highs. And he's just enjoying the summer so much. It's July. I still. just said this morning, August twentieth. Oh, unbelievable! August twentieth. It's 20th. just it 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 blows my mind. I have not had. A weekend coffee in bed for like five or six. That's weeks. because you keep going away every weekend and partying with your boyfriend. Your well, oh, he's a husband. Your yeah, husband he's and my husband. No, you party with your boyfriend during the week. Yes, yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How are you this morning? I'm good. I'm doing good. I feel rested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a minute there I woke up and I went, oh, but then I got over it. <laughs> Because, you know, everybody 445. has that. It's yeah. so dark when you get up. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. It's, and, and you know what? The dew on the window and you got to turn your heat on and then you get forget. In your car. And then, yeah. And then you get back in the car at lunch to go home for lunch and then your the heat's heat. blasting and you're like, <coughs> oh. what's, yeah. So imagine. it's that time of the year you're where, like, yeah, your nose is running or it's dried right out. These are your options. Enjoy your eggs. <laughs> Make sure they're cooked well. <laughs> Demi Lovato turned 27 yesterday. That's all she is? I don't know. She's, she's a had little a, punk. She's had a rough life. Yeah, she has. Actually, she turns 27 today. She celebrated by going to an Ariana Grande concert. concert did she? She did. So Ariana cute. Ariana Grande. Yes. And uh, they both saw each other before, and they had a little prayer before the concert oh. for happy birthday, Demi. And she looks fantabulous and that's that was her yesterday she does look great doesn't she i love those cute little uh, sunglasses that's what she wore to the concert she i want to is she i want to hear her singing is she singing again yet i don't know i imagine she is because you know drug use can really wreck your voice too really yeah yeah of course what was her drug of choice do you remember no i don't what she went to rehab for no i don't i don't know either i don't know if it ever came out she had mental health issues as well so yeah. i don't know if it was compounded just the, the addiction issues right yeah well, good for definitely. her yeah isn't that awesome 27 Love like these happy Just stories. Like me. <laughs> yeah. In what dog years? <laughs> Um, <laughs> hey, you oh. call me, did you just call me a dog? No, no, I just said you were old. Oh, uh, okay, it's National right. Radio Day. Oh, National Radio Day. You used to be in radio. I was in radio for probably, um, probably a quarter of my career. Eight years here in the Sioux, and about five years prior to that, you, when I first started in did Espanola. You, oh, you started in radio in Espanola before television. And CKNS Sickness Radio. Well, that's when they used to sit around in their Sickness rocking chairs. Remember radio. that when they used to sit around in their rocking chairs and yeah. listen to the radio? That's that when was Luann me. was on. And that was so long ago that we were still using 45s. 40, you were playing 45 yes. records yes, in, the, in the radio? In the yeah, I mean, I wasn't because I was the news person, but yeah, can you imagine? It's just like, how long ago was that? Oh, I don't know, 30, five years ago. Wow. Yeah. Do you know when I was a kid here in Sault Ste. Marie and I used to listen to, you know, CKCY and CJI. Mm -hmm. Do we have CJIC radio? CKCY and anyway, um, I used to actually think that the bands were live in the studio so in Sault Ste. Marie. Yes, so and I remember asking Michael Bob Jenkins, because mm -hmm. he was the artist for CJIC TV, mm -hmm. if I could come down and watch the bands play. And he broke it to me that they're not really there. No. Did you ever want to be an announcer, radio announcer? No. Jim did. My husband Jim did. did he, he used to, um, in, in their house um, where he grew up, there was a, an empty staircase going into the basement, so he set up that little area with the whole. He drew knobs on the walls, apparently, and stuff. And he <laughs> wanted to be a DJ. And then he started watching news because of Walter Cronkite. He thought he was just so fascinating. He's never done anything like that, but he married somebody who does all the time. 
There you go. Weird. He married Walter Cronkite. <laughs> 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 I have a little more hair than him. Do you know what else it is? It's, it's, it's World Mosquito Day. Yeah. Listen, I learned so much about mosquitoes this morning. Uh, the reason this is World Mosquito Day is because on this date in 1897, that was when the link between mosquitoes and malaria was discovered by Sir Ronald Ross, who won the Nobel wow. Peace Prize in 1902 for that discovery. So how many people did he infect before he figured out <laughs> mosquitoes? <laughs> to this day, Luann, over two million people die annually across the world from, from mosquito-borne diseases no. like malaria and West Nile and Zika. Over two, two million, million? Across, around the world die annually. That's today. More, than, more people than in Espanola. Uh, <laughs> two million every year? Now, did you know that mosquito is Spanish for little fly? No, I didn't know that. Mosquito is little, I guess, mosquito. I don't know. Mosquito, oh. Mosquito. So it's a little fly. Um, they only live up to less than two months. That's the lifespan That's of a mosquito. That's two months too long. Only females bite. Did you know that one? I did know that. Actually. I knew that too. Yes. And the female wings go so fast that it's high pitched. The humans can't hear it, but the males can hear it. When you hear a mosquito buzzing, mm -hmm. that's a male. Oh. If, it's, if it's a female, you wouldn't hear it because the pitch is too high. You're kidding. So, if you're, so you know how sometimes you're lying in your bed at camp at yeah, night or whatever, and you hear that thing buzzing? Yeah. If you hear that noise, don't worry. It's a male. He can't bite you. But if you're lying in bed at night at camp and you hear absolutely nothing, be very concerned. Be very concerned. <laughs> That's when the women are at work. That's when the women are at work. They need boys, the blood. They boys, need the they blood. Make the they noise, can lay right? up to 300 eggs one what? time, Miss females. Talk about labor. And I hope they get epidurals. They can't fly very far. Their maximum speed is 1.5 miles per hour, which means. Well, carrying all those babies, I couldn't fly either. Most mosquitoes do not travel more than 100 feet from where they were hatched. So when you're getting bitten in your backyard, that means. A hundred yards around you, there's a bunch of mosquitoes that have been hatched. Find the nest. A hundred feet, rather. Sorry, not yards. hundred feet. That's all. Oh, that's like they're very, very communal. Bug zappers don't kill mosquitoes. Less than 1% of the bugs killed by bug zappers are mosquitoes. It doesn't work because they're, they're not attracted to the blue light. They're attracted to the smell of carbon monoxide from our breaths. Oh. That's what draws mosquitoes mosquito, and perfume and stuff. So that's why I stay drunk. Dark. <laughs> no carbon monoxide. Dark clothing. They're attracted to dark clothing. They are. I had heard that, but I didn't know if it was true or not. And um, they have been around for over, since the Jurassic period, which means they're 210 million years old. Even Aristotle wrote about them in 300 BC. The Greek philosopher who said in 300 BC, he wrote, damn you. No. <laughs> <laughs> what about bats? Bats do not eat, only 1% of a bat's diet is mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are mainly eaten by fish, which doesn't help us because we're, there's no fish yeah. around, and dragonflies. And I, so what's the use of a bat? Why was a bat invented? Do we need the bat? Does it eat other flies? I don't know what kind of flies. But then it sticks in your hand. And those big, long, they call them mosquito eaters, crane flies, tall lies. They're just crane flies. They don't eat mosquitoes, and they're not mosquitoes. So there. So I, there. Hope, I hope this has helped. Thank you so much. Ms. Put on your deep bug spray to stop from getting yeah. bitten. That's what yes. it is. It's deep. That's the best. Thing it is to so. Do. And spray your clothes if you don't like the feeling of it on your on yourself. There you go. Um, huge thank you to Casey Security this morning for sponsoring the show. And on the show today, oh my goodness! So like urban planning stuff, people migrating to Sault Ste. Marie for jobs. Is it a good thing? How do we make this the Sioux more attractive to people? We talk about that with Charles Sertwill. They did a study. And then also coming up on the show is something else. So, <laughs> what is Paranormal it? Paranormal Society. For oh the right! Oh my gosh! You went one year, didn't you? I did. It was so much fun. Paranormal Convention in Sioux, Michigan, coming up on Thursday. So stay tuned for Tim Ellis on the show. And you have the news. I have the news. We'll be back right after this on mornings with her and me. <laughs> With over 45 years of experience, All Ontario Well Drilling offers hydro fracking and all well drilling services. Call 705-575-8088 or 705-257-9495. 
At Maitland Ford Lincoln, we see our trucks everywhere. We see them on Queen Street, Lake Street, North Street, Bay Street, Second Line, Third Line, Fourth Line, Pine Street, Great Northern People's Road, Wellington, Cora Road, Bruce Street, Carmen's Way, Northern Ave, Trunk Road. Folks come from all over Algoma District and beyond to buy their truck at Maitland Ford Lincoln. Amazing prices, outstanding service. King Street, Shannon Road, Gooley Bay, Black Road, Everman Road, and even on Pine Shores. Yep, our trucks are everywhere. Get yours at Maitland Ford Lincoln. Built for Northern Life. On Great Northern Road, just north of the hospital. Ontario established a $100 million affordability fund to help Ontarians who don't qualify for low-income conservation programs ease the burden of their electricity bill. Whether you rent or own your home, as long as you pay your electric bill, you could qualify. There are three levels of support available. The first is a home energy kit with upgrades like smart power bars and LED light bulbs. The second includes Energy Star appliances that help keep things cool during the hot summer months. The third is for electrically heated homes so that your power bills don't break the bank during those long Canadian winters. Plus, all upgrades including installation are completely free of charge. Visit affordabilityfund.org or call 1-855-494-FUND to find out if you qualify. Welcome back to Mornings with Luann and Tim, and joining me now via Skype all the way from Thunder Bay, Ontario, I have Charles Sertwill with me. Charles is the CEO of the Northern Policy Institute. Welcome, Charles. Thanks for having me. Uh, for our viewers' sake, can you give us a little bit of a, a brief background on the no Northern Policy Institute? I think you probably know a lot about it since you've been there since the inception, right? I, I was actually headhunted to, to start the organization, so that's right. I've been here six years, moved here from Halifax. Wow. Um, Really, we're, uh, we were intended to fill a gap. Uh, we're, we're the only region in the country that didn't have a, a dedicated, uh, evidence-driven think tank to focus on policy issues. And, uh, and we're what we call a full-service think tank. So we look at things like education, taxation, health care, transportation, immigration policies, whatever's going to make uh, tomorrow a better day for the folks that live in Northern Ontario. Wow, that's a, that's a large, a lot, of, a lot of priorities you have set, set aside for yourself there, right? I sleep well do you okay uh keep yeah, myself I, busy keep myself busy i would imagine so now you said you went from all the way from halifax to thunder bay was that a bit of a culture shock for you or what no not really although <laughs> i have to say that I, I i never thought i'd think of halifax as the big city until i got here to thunder bay and uh, <laughs> suddenly realized that there are some communities even smaller than we are so uh, well we yeah. are i didn't realize you guys are up over what's, what's your population 110 120 something like that we're, we're right at 110. The good news is it's stabilized and it started to grow, uh, not by the leaps and bounds that Halifax and other communities are growing, but, uh, you know, we, uh, we saw population growth in Sudbury last year and the year before. We saw population growth in Thunder Bay last year and the year before. We're still uh, waiting uh, for ours in the Sioux. Sioux St. Marie's doing okay. You've stabilized. Uh, We're stabilized. You lost a little bit, but uh, but uh, in and around you, things are going well. Perry Sound is is growing. Manitoulin uh, District is growing, and so there's lots of opportunities to both service that population and encourage a few of them to move across the border. Charles, where are you seeing the growth? In what areas? 
So in the Manitoulin district, you're seeing a lot of growth around the Indigenous population. The First Nations continue to see a high birth rate, and and uh, and they're coming into their own in terms of working age. Uh, good economic opportunities, particularly for uh, the the female population in that area. So that's good news in terms of seeing that uh, that economic participation happen. Uh, in the Sudbury and North Bay kind of areas, you're seeing a tiny bit of the trickle out of the GTA. Mm -hmm. You know, we saw last year about 50,000 people left the GTA. They're looking for, you know, they don't want to live in pods anymore. No. Uh, and so now we're starting to see that population shift hitting into Paris not even reaching as far as North Bay and Sudbury. And that's good news. That's excellent news. Now, as far as Sault Ste. Marie is concerned, you and I were talking briefly before the interview, and I mentioned, I, I think our statistics is somewhere around 30% of our population is over the age of 55. So obviously, we're looking for people to come into the workforce here as well. Um, Christina Zeffi, is that her name, I believe, right? It is. She wrote a series of articles, the Northern Attraction Series. Very interesting. And she talks a little bit about how uh, some of the ways that we could look at bringing more people to the north so migration being one of them obviously encouraging yep. people to come up here and, and take jobs and migration also from other countries there's been i think it's probably kind of standard that there are certain portions of a population that there's pushback when you talk about bringing different cultures different people into a community that has generally been you know a anglo-saxon kind of you know um I'm not entirely sure I'd describe uh, Sault Ste. Marie as Anglo-Saxon. I think some of the folks from uh, Southern Europe might have uh, a few things to say about that. I and it's interesting, you know, it's great for you to be talking about this issue from Sault Ste. Marie because the community itself has been really kind of a leader over the last three or four years on this topic. Uh, you know, you've got the mayor out there being passionate, you've got lots of community groups out there leading the way. You've now got future Sault Ste. Marie, uh, and Sault Ste. Marie went down as a community. So you took business players, you took uh, major employers, the university, some health folks and you went down to Peel and you talked to the folks who are unhappy about their decision to settle in the first instance in the GTA. You talked to them about the jobs that are available there, the housing, the quality of life, uh, how affordable, for example, childcare is, sports are, how affordable housing is in Sault Ste. Marie. That is the kind of strategy that Christina laid out for the rest of us and, and beautifully enough, uh, Sault Ste. Marie is a, is a model for that kind of approach. So what would you say to people who say we don't want people coming here and taking our jobs away? Well, uh, if you wanted the jobs, you'd have taken them by now. In many cases, we see uh, opportunities that are going wanting. You know, we did an analysis here at the Institute looking at the top 10 jobs, both in the Northwest, Northwest and the Northeast. Mm -hmm. uh, many of these jobs are advertising for 150, 250, 300 days. So we're talking about jobs that are sitting going empty for a year. Uh, and so what's happening, of course, is that in many cases, these are, these are the jobs that the folks who are here don't want to don't want to necessarily take. And it doesn't mean they're not attractive jobs. It just means that the folks who are here have different interests or different skills. So you look at personal support workers, for example. We've got lots of programs that are running to kind of train uh, folks who are here, whether that's indigenous population, the young people. Uh, we even got programs now trying to encourage men to move into traditionally uh, female-dominated uh, uh, area. But... Uh, but the simple fact is we don't have enough of them. Uh, many of the, po the population in Sault Ste. Marie and elsewhere is getting older. They're going to need people to take care of them. We can't grow uh, the supply of personal support workers fast enough to meet the demand, so we have to bring people from outside. Wow. Now, you, and your think tank is it's completely nonpartisan, right? There's no political uh, attachments to the work that you That's do? That's right. Yeah. So evidence-driven, we, uh, we pick on everybody. So if it's a good idea from the NDP, <laughs> we'll steal it. And if it's a bad idea from the Liberals, we'll stomp on it. So that's kind of thing. And by the way, if you're a partisan, you can flip that. So you can pick on the Liberals, throw, or pick on the NDP, throw kudos to the Liberals, whichever you prefer. So what about sustainability? What, what other things are going to drive us to become more sustainable in, in our northern Ontario communities? So I think when you, you've got to look at the, the question around sustainable growth and, and those types of things around infrastructure. You've got to, you've got to identify the fact that we've seriously got some social issues still on the ground that we've got to address mm -hmm. uh, and the economic questions and so you look at communities like Sault Ste. Marie you look at communities like uh, like North Bay or you or you look at smaller communities like Espanola and uh, and really what you've got is a situation where you've got to make sure that those at the, at the bottom end of the economic spectrum are getting the training they require to make their lives or the next generation's lives better uh, they're getting the supports to kind of meet those demands but you're also kind of taking care of your environment because the simple po point is you can't you can't invest entirely on in the economy today to the detriment of the environment tomorrow because we know that's a that's a losing losing proposition the northern policy institute also partners with um 
in the different areas where you where you do your studies and you do your research and you get your data, mm -hmm. you partner with places like I think in Sault Ste. Marie. Did you work with Nordic Institute at all, or at least somebody from Nordic? I think you had Dr. Gail Broad involved in the study, correct? So Gail Gail's involved on our advisory council. Okay. She was on our research advisory board, um, or actually, it's the other way around. She was on our advisory council and, and is now on the research advisory board. We partner with lots of groups. You think about. Uh, 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 the folks who do the labor market uh, research down in Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, we work very closely with Jonathan and his team. Uh, we work with some folks at Algoma University around the research on immigration, the research on education in First Nations. Um, we've had uh, authors from that area, and one of my favorite projects, of course, we've uh, we've had multiple summer offices run out of Algoma University. We call that Experience North. Yes. It's a program where we create jobs for, for uh, uh, young people who are studying in the public policy and economic development fields, uh, and so they have an opportunity either to come home, uh, which is many of what the students in Sault Ste. Marie did, so they come home for the summer, their parents get a chance to pitch them on staying or right. hope that they meet somebody special, uh, but we also bring in people from down south to get an experience of, of what the north looks like, and that works very well as, as it, to, in terms of an introduction to the north, so that uh, when they're making policy at Queen's Park, they've actually seen the, uh, <laughs> the, the water in front of Sault Ste. Marie. Right. And you've also, so it sounds like there's a, this is really a multi-pronged approach to, um, to bringing people to, into the community, right? Absolutely. In the six years that MPI's been in existence, we've had six MPI babies. So we're doing our fair share on the demographic shift as well. <laughs> Very good. We believe in implied research. So now where does your research land? After you've done all this work, you've done the studies, you get the hard facts, you get the data, uh, you write your reports. Where do we go from there? So that shifts right into the partnership mode you were talking about. We supply all that information to the elected officials. We supply it to all the provincial or provincial and federal parties so that if they're putting together their election platforms, we have uh, uh, direct relationships with most of the, the provincial and federal agencies and departments. Huh. Uh, and we, we spend a lot of time educating people about, uh, about the policy that will work best based on the evidence in Northern Ontario. And so in the immigration file, you see a lot of that kind of coming to the fore. You see the federal government has launched the Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot, informed to a great extent by a lot of the research that we've done in terms of the opportunities in Northern Ontario. You see the new uh, provincial changes that have uh, added personal support workers and truck drivers to the Ontario immigrant nominee stream. Again, that is driven a lot by the research that we made available to our local politicians and to key players like the Chambers of Commerce, the local unions, those types of exercises, because of course, um, they're very vocal, they're very plugged in. But in many cases, they don't have the resources to do the research. That's our job. We give them the information, and they go off and make things change. Wow. Well, that, that sounds pretty invaluable, actually. How are you funded? So right now, we get about 65% of our funding from the NOHFC through project grants. So that's internships, that's specific projects like the matchmaker exercise. Uh, we get the other 35% from corporations, individuals, and private foundations. So Great. that Experience North project I was talking to you about, mm -hmm. RBC Foundation uh, generously gave $50,000 to support that project for this year and next year. All right. So bottom line summary, what is the message you would... Your like Christina had a message for all of us basically. Could you sort of sum that up for us just to wrap things up? So her message was quite simple. Uh, you can't do this as a one-off exercise. Understand our strengths and market those. And remember that this isn't about, uh, isn't about uh, making our communities better. It's about making the lives of the people we're trying to attract better. And that means we have to know what they want to buy and make sure that we're selling them the right thing. Sounds like a plan to me. There you go. <laughs> I want to thank you very much for your time, Charles Sertwell, the CEO of Northern Policy Institute. If anybody wants more information, Charles, where can we direct them? Northernpolicy.ca. That's pretty simple, isn't it? We hope so. I want to thank you again for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having us. All the best to you. And we'll be back with more mornings with Luann and Tim right after this. support the ReStore, it helps Habitat for Humanity build affordable housing for families. How does this work? New and gently used goods are donated to the ReStore. The sale of these goods generate funds for building homes. For every $1 spent at the ReStore, there is a $4 return on investment within our community. For example, Habitat homeowners have better educational outlook, 
increased employment stability, improved health, and reduction in the use of social services. Every donation and every dollar we receive through the Restore helps build sustainable housing for future homeowners. Everyone needs a foundation to build a future. To find out more and how you can help, drop by the Restore at 32 White Oak Drive or go to habitatsu.ca. As a nation, Canada has participated in all of the major world conflicts. In the Sioux area alone, over 10,000 men and women have enlisted in the Canadian Armed Forces. The Veterans Commemorative Monument aims to cement the legacy of the Canadian Armed Forces in stone. It will highlight the bravery, strength, courage and sacrifice of our service men and women. In times of need, they volunteered to serve us. Now it is our time to thank and recognize their sacrifice. You can help honor our men and women of service by donating today. To help construct this special, one-of-a-kind monument, visit thosewhoserve.ca to find out how to donate and more. And you are familiar with Pauline's Place I am, down on absolutely. Queen Street. I remember when it was struggling to start. 2004 it established. Yes. So that's a good, they've had a oh. good run. And they, they are a 19 bed facility providing emergency shelter to youth, women and families who are experiencing homelessness. At Pauline's Place they strive to eliminate poverty in this community by providing food and food, basic, uh, food and basic supplies. Mm -hmm. They are having a fundraising, oh. but it's really cool. It's called Bring Me the Breakfast. Starting tomorrow, Wednesday, August 21st, 22nd, 23rd, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if you call Pauline's Place, they will deliver to you or to your loved ones a freshly prepared breakfast, what? no delivery charge. Yeah. Anywhere within a 15 minute radius, which is basically all of sure. sort of downtown Sault Ste. Marie and beyond. Um, so anyway, for, for instance, here's the menu. Tomorrow. Wednesday, pancake with a small fruit bowl, tea, coffee, juice. Thursday, three eggs, choice of bacon, sausage, bread, toast, <gasps> co coffee, tea, juice. Friday, uh, muffin, hash brown, egg, break, egg, bread, toast, coffee, juice. All proceeds will go towards supporting Pauline's Place Shelter and homelessness in our community. Isn't that awesome? Ready? Here's the phone number. Get ready. 705-759-4663. 705-759-4663. Fifteen minutes and it's free. Um, <laughs> free delivery. So get your breakfast, right? Wasn't that a nice idea? Or send some send breakfast to somebody else. And they'll tell you the price of it when you call. Um, I don't. Up? Yeah, because I don't have. I don't think I have a price yeah, here. Yeah, I'm sure they'll tell you. Yeah, but anyway, it's a fundraiser. So Isn't call there awesome? and have breakfast delivered and help out the people. Who Pauline's place. Pauline's place. Hey, big news in Hollywood. Whoa. Jamie Fox and Katie Holmes. Just six lit. years done. Finished kaput. He was seen coming out of a nightclub, mm -hmm. uh, holding hands with another woman who <gasps> is probably um, young enough to be his daughter, yeah. and um, is a singer or an aspiring singer. And her last name is Vave, and she apparently is being helped by Jamie, is what he says. <laughs> oh, sorry. So he's going to get her career going. Yes. And what's she going to get going? I've never heard that line before in my whole no. life. Oh. Yeah, so I mean they were kind of it was a, it was a weird relationship. They certainly weren't, weren't one of those couples there that they are there. were like out there all the time with the paparazzi following them and stuff. They were very secretive. They went out for a couple of years before people even knew that they were dating. 6 years though. And he finally went over the daughter, Yuri, and uh, <laughs> broke up with uh, the mother. Um he's very talented. He's Phenomenal. He can do, he acts like a beast. He sings, 
hysterically funny. Yeah, and he yeah. does uh, perfect impersonations as, as the Ray Charles movie that he did. Oh, he was phenomenal. Um, he was great in that yeah, film. Yeah, And did all of his own singing. Yes, yeah. He's, did he he's play really too? Terrific. I think he might play as well. I think he learned how to play if he didn't know. And now he knows how, he knows how to play. Yeah, he, apparently he's, a, he's, he's playing a, again. He's a player. He's a player, player, Okay, so player, now I player. totally remember what my next interview is. You do? <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Okay, Who's so coming up? Tim Ellis. From Sioux, Michigan, he has the radio show in the morning. Yes, yes, yes. Ninety-five point one, I think it is. Yes. Anyway, Eagle Radio. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim, that this has nothing to do with his radio program. In his spare time, he's part of the um, uh, Paranormal, Paranormal Society, Society in in, North, in Sioux, Michigan, and they are hosting. This is their. I think 10th year. I went a couple of years ago and Tim it's does a phenomenal job just coordinating everything. Michigan Paranormal awesome. Convention. You have to go with someone. Yeah, no, so check out the interview coming up after. No, wait. The news is the news next. News is first. Is it, it feels like Monday. No, it's not. Today's Tuesday and we're going to take a commercial break right now. Then we're going to do the news. Then we're going to come back and chat with you. So Thank stay God tuned. you're here, Luann. <laughs> <laughs> Since 1899, The Machine Shop has been a unique space for innovation and creativity. Once a leading pulp and paper company, The Machine Shop was built by Francis H. Clerg, which later became part of St. Mary's Paper in 1984. After the closure of St. Mary's Paper in 2011, The Machine Shop spent four years vacant. In 2015, The Machine Shop reopened their doors to the community for the first time. From weddings to galas to concerts and festivals, the one-of-a-kind venue has something for everyone. We are proud to work with the community and local nonprofits to host major events such as Festival of Trees, Pearls and Plaid, an evening at Hogwarts, and more. While you're here, wind down at the Mill Steakhouse and Wine Bar for a quiet dining experience, or watch a game and try a wood fire oven pizza and local draft at the Boiler Room. Don't forget to save room for house-made gelato and baked goods at the Gelato Mill. For more information on the Machine Shop events, history, and restaurants, visit machineshopinc.ca. Three great places, one historic venue. Today at the annual meeting of the Association of Municipalities in Ottawa, how changes made by his government had affected municipalities over the last year and what he planned going forward. After Ford paused this year's planned cuts to public health, child care and land ambulance funding, it was unclear whether they would go ahead next year. His office now says some of those changes will take effect January 1st. I'm a true believer in empowering municipalities. Get Queen's Park out of the way. Remember, and I'll say this later in the speech, I was a municipal councillor. And I used to have some real choice words about Queen's Park. And I'm, <laughs> I did. And uh, so I've walked a mile in your shoes. We believe in building a better province that, that actually starts with investing in its people. We need to help them. Not with top-down approaches directed as Queen, by Queen's Park, as I just said, but from the ground up. From the ground up, and that's why our government is committed to building strong local partnerships with our municipalities. Conservation authorities and Conservation Ontario are stunned by a letter that the province circulated recommending that conservation authorities start shutting down any programs not related to their core mandate as described by the province in the proposed changes to the Conservation Authorities Act earlier this year. Conservation authorities and their member municipalities received letters from Minister of Environment, Conservation and Parks Jeff Urich addressed to whom it may concern. That was Friday evening, recommending that CA start to wind down any programs not directly related to their core mandate. 
Conservation authorities provide a wide variety of watershed management programs in partnership with all levels of government. These programs help to reduce or prevent the costly and devastating damages of flooding, protect water sources, help to reduce pollution from getting to the Great Lakes, and support healthy watersheds. General Manager of Conservation Authority Kim Gavine said they were caught completely by surprise, adding that they've been working for months in good faith with the government to make a number of planning and development approvals, streamlining changes to support their agenda to eliminate the deficit and implement the housing strategy. There was no consultation with Conservation Ontario or the CAs about this letter before it was circulated. Gavine pointed out that what the government is proposing isn't taking into consideration the fact that the CA Act is still a work in progress. Sioux MP Terry Sheehan says $6 million in budget 2019 will help more people including young people and underrepresented groups like women, pursue a career in the skilled trades and is a big win for the Sioux. An advisory committee will lay the groundwork for a national campaign to encourage apprenticeships and promote the skilled trades as a career of choice. They will lead consultations, explore partnerships, and provide advice to the Minister of Employment, Workforce Development and Labour. In 2006 and in 2011, the Canadian government airlifted citizens out of Lebanon and Libya when violent conflict erupted. Speaking at an event in Quebec City yesterday, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau would not say if he would do the same for Canadians in Hong Kong. Trudeau says he does remain concerned about Canadians there, but also about issues of human rights, freedoms of expression and assembly. We are uh, very aware of the difficult situation in Hong Kong right now. We uh, repeat our calls for uh, peace, for de-escalation, uh, for uh, listening uh, by uh, local authorities and by the Chinese government to the preoccupations uh, expressed by the citizens of Hong Kong. There are 300,000 Canadian citizens in Hong Kong. It's the largest uh, group of uh, citizens of any country uh, in Hong Kong right now. So we are very concerned about them, but we also are very concerned about human rights and freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, uh, and we are going to continue to uh, call upon the Chinese government to respect the uh, one country, two systems uh, agreement that they have long abided by. A dildo update. <laughs> dildo Newfoundland. Ah, yes. Jimmy Kimmel is now the honorary mayor of Dildo. That's so awesome. There he goes. Where's Dildo? Um, he, you know, if, if you weren't watching me or Jimmy Kimmel, you wouldn't know, but he's been, he, he heard about Dildo Newfoundland. He just fell in love with the name. He's been doing a running gag, which now has cost ABC $100,000 for the Ooh. joke. Ooh. They actually sent Guillermo Rodriguez up there, his little sidekick, <laughs> and he got screeched in. And then, as a gift to the town of Dildo, Jimmy had a like a, you know the Hollywood sign. Yes. He had a Dildo sign put on the erected. Oh, he had a Dildo erected over the on a hilltop overlooking the town as a gift. And he's so That's happy to awesome. be the honorary mayor. He's going to go visit. He can't actually run be the mayor until he visits. He has to physically go and visit. Yes, they won't. They won't give him the mayorship. So well, there you go. Anyway, honorary mayor Jimmy Kimmel. 
you know, congratulations. A, a joke for a hundred thousand dollars worth goes a long way. Goes a long it? way. Late night talk shows. Speaking of late night talk shows, yeah, well, Conan O'Brien says yeah. he's going to Greenland. <laughs> he's going to try to negotiate. He's going to offer up the United States' best state for sale, Florida. Because, you know, of course, President Trump wants to buy Greenland. Yeah. Though it's not for sale. So that's what Conan O'Brien said. He's going to go to uh, Greenland himself and, and he's going to negotiate. Try and do a little negotiation. He's gonna, you give me Greenland, I'll give you Florida. Can you imagine? No, why would he give up Florida? Right? Well, Except, because, but that's because he wants to make the sale. Right. I mean, and then Greenland will get all those guns in Florida. Right. Wow. And all the octogenarians. All the, yeah. Oh, Miami Beach. I lived in Miami Beach for a year, you guys. It's the funniest thing. You get to the, like, um, uh, where the, all the Bal Harbor, where all the very, very wealthy people are. Yes. And it's all like Lincolns and Cadillacs, and you can't see any of them. <laughs> They're all, you just see, like, white hair driving in these big, big, huge cars. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I know. When I retire, I want to be that. Oh, wow. What a place to live. Right? Still Absolutely. St. Louis is a great place to live, though, it too. Is. It Absolutely. is. Uh, it okay. is. Absolutely. Okay. So, now my next interview is coming yes. up with the Paranormal Convention. So, if you're not doing anything this weekend and you're into that kind of stuff, so the place fun. to be is over at Q Aiden. You can go visit our friend Tim Ellis. He's putting on the uh, Michigan yeah, the Michigan Paranormal Convention. Check and it's out. about hosts who are going to be there, hosts of all those funky shows that you watch, maybe? The you definitely I've watch. had such a blast. So much fun. That's coming up right after this. Welcome to The Machine Shop, our historic venue and gathering place for friends and family. Built in 1899 on the site of a Northwest Company trading post. Today we are a go-to venue hosting many expos, concerts, weddings and more. While you're here, choose one of our dining experiences. Enjoy a quiet dinner at the Mill Steakhouse and Wine Bar, watch a game in Trywood Fire Oven Pizza and Local Draft at the Boiler Room, or treat yourself every day to gelato and local coffee at the Gelato Mill. For more information on The Machine Shop, visit machineshopinc.ca. What do you wish for? A nice life? Nice things? Or do you wish for something more? A sense of purpose? Do you wish to discover a cure? To write code that cracks an unsolvable question? To further our exploration into space? Or to invent something that changes everything right here on Earth? Well. If that's your wish, make yourself ready. Because when you look back, you'll see that you didn't just make wishes, you realize them. every moment. Will you grow old with vitality? Or get old with disease? It's time to decide. 
The average Canadian will spend their last 10 years in sickness. Change your future at makehealthlast.ca. Welcome back to Mornings with Luann and Tim. Joining me via Skype because it's a long way across the bridge. <laughs> This is Tim Ellis is here from Sioux, Michigan. Good morning, Tim. How are you? Hey, Tim. Good morning. I'm well. This is the first Skype interview I've ever done, and I've done hundreds of interviews in my life. Uh, this is a little different, I must say. Well, the unfortunate thing is you can't see me, but I can see you. So let me just tell you that I am extremely young and very attractive. Uh, I already knew that, though. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to just say, I'm going to go right out there and say it. I know you as Timmy E from, uh, from your radio program. You work in the morning, so do I. So I'm glad to have you joining us today that you took some time from your schedule to talk about yes. the Paranormal Convention. Tell me, tell me, the proper title of it is? It's the Michigan Paranormal Convention, MI Paracon. MI Paracon. Michigan yeah. Paranormal Convention, this is a celebratory year for you, isn't it? It really is. It's our 10th year anniversary, which when we first started this, 11 years ago when we first started planning the first one we weren't sure what to expect we thought maybe after two years we'd see if it was worth to, you know to keep doing it if we were wasting our time or whatever and here we are celebrating our 10th anniversary and it just keeps getting bigger and 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 we're loving it okay let's back up to how all of this happened in the first place so sure. uh, how, how did you come up with the idea of bringing the convention to the upper peninsula who was involved and, and what's the backstory there yeah, well, the backstory really goes all the way back for our love of the paranormal. Um, when we were just kids, myself, uh, another best friend of mine, Brad Blair, and another uh, best friend of mine who we all grew up with, the three of us, Steve LaPlante, we met in third grade. It was our love of everything strange and paranormal and, and just weird that connected us immediately. Uh, we never outgrew it. We left and, and did our own things for college, came back, and we still had the same love. So we wanted to bring it to an adult level. Um, and not just run around through cemeteries and old houses anymore. You get arrested at that age. So, uh, so we, we, we created the Upper Peninsula Paranormal Research Society back in uh, 98, 99, and then we officially became a group in, in 2000. Um, in those early years, Brad and I used to travel around quite a bit to two conventions like this because we wanted to learn from the best when we were starting our team out. Uh, we wanted to uh, hear from the people who were actually in the field working, the authors and the researchers. And I, we were coming back one day from one of the trips, uh, and we were flying back from Florida. I said, Brad, you know, let's let's try it in the Sioux. Why not? You know, but here's the one thing we knew, though, Tim. We knew if we were going to make it happen here in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, we had to make it big because Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan is not on the way to anywhere. All right, you've got to be coming here. So <laughs> you have to be we a knew if we were going to get people here, we had to create an event that was big. Um, we approached our local uh, casino, Kuwait Casinos. Um, it just so happened their entertainment department at that very moment was looking to do something a little bit more than just the music act they bring in. And it was the perfect timing. It was the perfect storm. And a couple years later, we said, you know, this is still kind of working. Let's keep going with it. And then here we are now at, at 10. And every year, ex grown exponentially larger. Your turnouts are getting bigger and bigger. You hit over a thousand last year, yes? Yeah, it was our it was our record breaking year. It was over a thousand. First couple of years were a little shaky, but you talk to anyone who puts on a, an annual event, they'll tell you mm -hmm. be prepared to lose money and kind of you know see slow growth in the first few years. It's just the way you know society works. And you got to grow your base. It, 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 what's that? You got to grow your base. Take yeah, exactly. And, and people have got to understand that it's, a, it's an event they can trust All and right. they enjoy. And so um, we, we started to see some minimal growth over around years five, six and seven. And but then last year, it really took off. We broke a thousand. And this year, we're expecting anywhere from 13, 14, maybe even 1500 people when it's all said and done. And you've expanded to three days. Yes, we expanded to uh, the the very first year we ever did this. We were we had a couple presentations on a Friday night, mm -hmm. and then it was all day Saturday. Okay. Then it quickly became two full days, Friday and Saturday. Last year was the first year we pushed it into Thursday, wow. and this year as well. So it begins at four p.m. on Thursday, and then it's all day Friday and all day Saturday. And that's like in two days. I mean, Thursday is right. that's, that's this week. Exactly. So it's it's a big week for us. We're all excited, kind of checked out mentally with the real work, you know, and yeah. uh, and just and, and ready to just kind of uh, dive in because we literally move into the casino for three days and just 
it, it, it becomes our world for like three days and we love it. How does it happen? As, uh, how does it work with tickets, Tim? Do, do people, can people come for a day? Can they buy a, a pass for the entire weekend? What, how does the entry work? Right. And, and it, it, there's, yeah, they've got a couple options there, Tim. They can do day passes. Um, they can go to miparacon.com, which is the main website, and they can see the full schedule. Maybe there's one particular person they won't really want to see, so they don't want to buy for the whole weekend. Okay. So they can do that. Um, or they can buy the full weekend pass. Now, here's the thing, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. As of Monday night, um, the buying them online is, is no longer an option, but you can still get them now Thursday morning at Kuwait and Casino at the box office. So okay. you can still get tickets and you can still do day passes, um, but they're no longer online at this point. They'll have to wait till Thursday morning at the casino. Right, okay. I, I mentioned to you before we went to air that uh, Luann had has attended the paranormal convention right. over in Sioux, Michigan. She's she calls it. She loves all those kinds of shows. She loves the paranormal. She watches the shows on TV. She really into that stuff. And she said, she said, I was like a little fan girl over there. <laughs> I was so I saw the people that I saw on TV. I saw the authors of the books that I've read. I was posing for pictures. I did the whole thing. That's what it's like, right? It, it is, and that's kind of why I, I think part of the uh, the growth of our event has has happened because it's a very intimate setting even though we're, we could have anywhere from 14 1500 people this year it still has that family atmosphere as far as like we we all call ourselves a paranormal family everyone who comes year after year refers to it as uh the family reunion because it is so intimate it's under one roof um all the presenters and the authors and the tv celebrities all stay there at kuwait all the ticket holders who can get rooms there before it sells out stay there. But even if you're not staying there, but you're there through the day and the night, these very same celebrities are, are at the restaurant, they're in the bars, they're just hanging out. Or you can see them in the vendor room as well. If you've got weekend passes for the event, you get to go to the vendor room. So it's just it's a very, um, very laid back very easy going and and those celebrities and those authors and those researchers are there and they will like Luann said will sit there and take pictures all day with the people they're, did, they're wonderful did you also mention to me that there are workshops what is what is that about yeah it's something we started a couple years ago um you know we do psychic gallery readings uh the psychics and the mediums will do kind of some side room readings as well but we started doing some workshops um that are a little bit different like last year we did what's called black mirror scrying where it's it's believed that if you look into this uh reflective black um mirror type thing you can start to see spirits so there was a workshop on that next year we're hoping to do a workshop on casting bigfoot prints you know so we're working on side things like that we've got um, another uh, painting um, event going on. So they're, they're what we call the, the side workshops. Wow. So they're, 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 they're part of the weekend, but they're separate ticketed events. Oh, I get you. Okay, so you can yeah. choose. It's almost like an elective, right? You can choose to go to yeah, those things if you exactly. want. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if I've never been before, what can I expect? When I walk in there, like, what am I gonna see? Uh, and then what do I do when I'm there? <laughs> a whole lot of craziness, Tim. Yeah. That's what you're going to see. Um, but in a good way. Uh, you know, we often, people will actually come to us who have attended for the first time. They're like, man, this isn't what I expected. I expected to see, like, people dressed up in weird costumes and, and just, I, I don't know what they're envisioning. Now, there are some people who are there. You know, we've got this one ghost mascot that comes every year. He's okay. he, this big ghost outfit. I mean, but it's not... It's not ghouls and goblins no. and, and anything like that. It's it's really it's it's you and I. It's here's the here's the amazing thing, Tim. Everyone has a ghost story to share. Yes. Whether it's a fish, whether it's actually happened to them or someone in their family or close to them has shared it with them. However, people will not share these experiences until they know they are around a group of people who are like minded. Because otherwise. You know, it's still kind of taboo or, or people just kind of can look at people like they're strange if they think their house is on it or they're talking about ghosts. But right. this weekend, this weekend is all about bringing people who believe, want to learn more. We've even had skeptics who are pulled in by their wives who yes. come to the weekend. But they end up having a great time because it's so much different than they thought it was. We've got a full schedule of pre uh, presenters. And none of them overlap each each other. So you can pick and choose which ones you want to go to. If you want to take them all in, you'll probably sit through 30 different presentations when the Whoa. weekend's done. Um, otherwise, you can pick and choose the subject matter and the topic you want to learn about and go. And then if, if you're not interested in that, then you go hang out in the in the um, 
in the vendor room. Right. And if you don't want to be there, well, then you know what? You go kick uh, your feet up somewhere in the in the casino and, and take an hour or two break. But it's really it's very open, flowing. You don't have to be anywhere at any time. You just pick and choose which topics you want to learn about and uh, just enjoy the weekend. Hey, and the other question I had was uh, the schedule you're talking about. Is that information available on the website, Tim? It is. Again, that's uh, MI as in Michigan, yeah. Paracon as in uh, Paranormal Convention, yeah. and then dot .com. So MIParacon.com. And it all starts this Thursday at Kiwing. That's right. At 4 o'clock is the first presentation. 4 o'clock right through three days until Sunday, right? You got it. Sunday morning, we're all kind of hugging each other and saying our goodbyes and we're worn out but we call what we, what we call the mi paracon hangover because the weekend was so <laughs> energy charged and then everyone's saying goodbye and we got to wait a whole nother year so as a society do you yeah. actually do investigations and stuff in, in the upper peninsula area yeah we actually we do um we all through the up down into northern lower michigan as a wow. matter of fact just this year and it'll be available at the convention we um we wrote our first book and it's based on 20 years of case files from the UPPRS. So it's a book we had a blast writing. It got published and, and released in late June, and um, the response has been outstanding so far. And uh, we're really looking to, uh, uh, you know, open it up to people at, at the convention this weekend. Fantastic. Hey, thanks again for spending some time with us this morning. I know you're a busy guy, Tim. Uh, have a great time at the convention. I wish you all the best. Oh, thank you, Tim, and I appreciate you and Luann giving us the time here. Thank you so much. All right, all the best to you, and check it out. It is the Michigan Paranormal Convention at Key Waden starting this Thursday at 4 o'clock for three days. And you can go online and check it out as well. And that, once again, is miparacon.com, right? You got it. I got it. Okay. Bye for now. We'll be back with more Mornings with Luann and Tim right after this. If you're struggling with thoughts of suicide, there is hope and there is help. You matter. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The calls are free and confidential. Call 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255. You are not alone. They served to protect our homes. Now many are homeless. They fought for our way of life. Now many are fighting personal battles of their own. They answered the call for our country. Now we honor them by serving our communities. Help us help Canada's veterans. Become a Legion member today. Well, that was so much fun. I want to do this all again tomorrow. Let's do it then, because it's Wellness Wednesday, too, after it all. Is. And you know who's joining us tomorrow for their regular appearance? Abby and Josh. Talk and trash with Abby and Josh <laughs> from Clean North. I always love when they join me. Yeah, they're so easygoing, and man, they are dedicated to the cause. They are. Absolutely. Huge thank you to KC Security once again for sponsoring the show for us. We certainly appreciate it, guys. Now go out and enjoy your Tuesday. Tuesday. It's going to get sunny. It's it going to get a little bit muggy. So if you have hair that frizzes up, just put a baseball cap on. <laughs> have a great day, though. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye Bye for now. <laughs>
head he fell. <laughs> Whoa, I'm not driving. I'm way too stoned. How are you feeling, beer? Oh, since we had that talk, I'm not driving tonight at all. What, what about, about you, you, Dave? You only had a couple of drinks. And only a couple of puffs. I don't drink and drive. No way I'm getting behind the wheel when I smoked weed, too. How are we getting home, then? Well, you can drive, Dave. Come on, Dave. Take one for the team, buddy. Don't let weed and alcohol influence your decision to drive. Yeah, I need a ride.